Hello everyone, come on in. It's book club number 42, my last 10 book clubs before I go on a break. So we're talking about a radical awakening. This is book club number 42. All the book clubs are on YouTube, I believe, and you can access them eternally for posterity. So let's talk about uh, true love. Let's talk about intimacy. Let's talk about connection and authenticity. So come on in. Yesterday, the book club glitched. So uh, it was a day of a lot of technical challenges. So um, I'm going to redo book club number 42 today. And come on in. Hi, guys. We're talking about a radical awakening. Maybe you're having your own awakening in your own life through a life situation or a circumstance and um, and life is difficult right now for you or challenging. So if it is, then this is your book. This is a book that is truly written for women who are going through a portal of transformation. If you are such a woman, especially going through a tremendous midlife crisis, which is when um, most of our crisis hit, then um, pick up this book. It will awaken you to your patterns. It will show you what you've been asleep to. On page 103, uh, my pen is out annotating so much of what you say. One of the people on Instagram wrote that. Hi from Slovenia. I love the book. Started the audiobook. Finished the book. I've tuned into every book club. The book is absolutely amazing. Hi, Magdalena. Um, okay, so this book is really for women who have gone through enough life experience to realize that their patterns are just not working. So for a young woman, it's also amazing because they get to see what they shouldn't be doing. And for older women, um, it's great because they get to see what hasn't worked, right? What hasn't worked for so long. So wh wherever you are in your stage of life, uh, this book is going to help you to develop your power, to enter your sovereignty, and to understand that you are the writer of your narrative. You are the writer of your story. You know, so often we women especially have been conditioned to give up our power, to look outward, to be tethered to the experience and opinions and expertise of other people. Yet, the other is so weak compared to our inner knowing. Nobody can guide us as efficiently, as superiorly as us ourselves. But because we are untethered from our own power, we are tethered to the outside, so we're untethered from our own power. We truly create surrogate powers outside of us as if they have the answer to our inner knowing. And they can't. Nobody can have an answer to our inner knowing. Nobody, because we are the only ones who can know ourselves. So because we've been trained to give up our power over and over again, we really believe that somebody on the outside has that power. It's not our fault. It's our conditioning. We've been living in a void to our own inner knowing. We've been living disconnected to our own inner power. And because of this disconnect, it's truly a mind trip. But we truly do believe that the other on the outside has power. It's a fascinating thing. We really believe this bullshit lie that somebody on the outside can know us better can lead us better, can know who we are more than who we know who we are. It's a fascinating thing that occurs. And it occurs because we've been conditioned to rely on others on the outside. As a mother, even though my daughter makes uh, extremely scary choices of clothes or boys or lifestyle, right? Um, I try my best to zip my lips because I so understand that human nature needs to arrive at its own authentic power. 
Now, do I know the right answer for her? 120%. Do I see her running into a wrecking wall? Yes. But I try my best until and unless the danger is huge to zip it. Why? Because every human being wants intrinsically to arrive at their own inner knowing. They just don't know it because it's been robbed from them. So I try not to rob it from my daughter, even though it's like, oh my God, like how do I not say anything right now? How do I not speak up right now? How do I not give you my opinion right now? But I learned to zip it because after a certain age, we must develop our own inner knowing. And yes, it's easy to rely on someone else. And yes, it's easy for someone to give us the answer. But that is not authentic. Authenticity arrives from struggle. It arrives from pain. It arrives from failure. So yes, as a, as a protector, as a mother, as a friend, you want to, you know, clench your, your, your fists because you want, you so badly want to protect the other, but you can't. We cannot jump in to protect other people more than they want to be protected because they must arrive at that inner power on their own. So do you value, value authenticity or do you value, value dependency? Do you value that somebody go through the struggle and arrive at their own resilience? Or do you value you being the savior? Right? You have to ask yourself, what is authenticity? Authenticity is struggle. No one just knows who they are. Even if no one robbed us of our inner knowing, we would still struggle because every knowing takes time. So given that we've been robbed from our inner knowing, we must go through the struggle to arrive back at that clarity. It takes months, if not years, to discover the inner voice that has been forgotten, that has been suppressed, that has been ignored, right? It takes cultivation. That's why I try not to suffuse my daughter's voice because she'll take years to undo that. So I'd rather her be native to herself, her be original to herself, her be the original copy, the first copy to herself. But if we lay a copy over copy over our children and our partners and each other, then it takes even longer to discover the authentic self. So you have to ask, what do I value? What do I value? If it is comfort, then that's against authenticity. If it is uh, complacency, that is against authenticity. If it is status quo, that is against authenticity. So you have to ask, what do I value right now? If you prefer connection, sometimes connection trumps authenticity, right? If my daughter comes to me and goes, mommy, mommy, what do I do? And she's trying to connect. I have to really decide, do I want to be a mom or do I want to be a shepherd of her authenticity? And many times I want to just be a mom because I want love. But I always try to remember, no, I am only a shepherd to her authenticity. I don't need her to need me. I don't need her to love me. I need her to figure her own voice out. And that means sometimes ab abandoning the ego of mother, right? Abandoning the ego of friend, abandoning the ego of lover, right? Are we each other's spiritual ushers? and spiritual partners, or are we not? Now, I know I'm asking a lot because everyone is like, no, I'm a wife, I'm a mom. But at the highest calling, we are each other's spiritual partners, yes? So if you tap into that, then you realize that your ego has been identifying with the role, but your true, your true uh, ultimate highest self is to be each other's spiritual partners, which means your ego has to step out of the way. It's not about your love. It's not about you being amazing in somebody else's life. It's about, hey, you do you and flourish. I'm here to guide you and I cannot rescue you. I cannot step in to take away your pain because I will be doing you a disservice because it is through your pain that you will discover your ultimate resilience. It is through the struggle that you will find your own saviorship. It is through your gnarly lost ways, losing your way that you will find yourself. So you have, to, you have to ask yourself, what is the point of this existence? What is the point of my presence in this person's life? 
If it is for my ego, then I won't be their truest spiritual partners. So talking about transcendent partnerships, transcendent spiritual ushering of each other requires that we first become our own greatest spiritual partners. No, really, I mean, it's really a cliche that, oh, love yourself and then you can love someone else. But no, really, truly, how do you love yourself? How do you truly be your best companion? Because at the end of the day, you have nobody. It's an illusion that you have anybody, okay? All you have is some other person's company. But that is not your destiny. That doesn't fill you up. The only true filling up is your own connection with yourself. That is the enduring filling up. That is where unconditional love occurs, where you have given up your own egoic barriers to your own union with yourself. So the greatest transcendent love can only occur when you are fully devoted to yourself. You cannot have great sex with anyone unless you have had great sex with yourself. Yes, sorry. So if you've never had sex with yourself, you're not having great sex with anyone else. I'll tell you why. Because if you don't know what gives you pleasure, how can somebody else give you pleasure? In the same way, if you haven't spent time by yourself, not zoning out, watching Netflix or on a couch, but truly walking or contemplating or reflecting or journal writing or anything that takes you within yourself, then you cannot be truly with anyone else. If you don't really have chemistry with yourself, if you don't think that you're like, wow, amazing company, if you don't think that you are like, wow, really intelligent, really emotionally smart, really psychologically savvy, how are you going to find anyone else like that? Leave alone them find you these things. So it's the same cliche, become the love you want. Yes. Or be the lover that you want. You have to become it. In order to do that, you have to cultivate it. You know, I say unabashedly, I 100% adore myself, even though I can drive myself crazy. 100%. But I have compassion to myself. I have, I find myself funny. I think uh, I find myself attractive. I find myself intelligent. Now you'll be like, oh, such a braggart. And I'm like, no, the only way I can find you anything is if I find me something. So everyone who's like, oh, I don't like myself, but I love you is lying. Oh, I don't think of myself as intelligent, but I think of you as intelligent is lying. Because how, if you're not intelligent, can you find somebody else intelligent? No, what you're doing then is just needing someone, dependent on someone and or in awe of someone, putting someone on a pedestal. You're not truly appreciating the other person. You can only truly appreciate the other person when you have truly appreciated yourself. So when people tell me, oh, Dr. Shifali, you're amazing, or if they tell me, oh, Dr. Shifali, you're full of shit, neither has anything to do with me, you understand? It has to do with you, you. <laughs> so I don't take your compliment and I don't take your denigration of me because I've learned that neither have anything to do with me. So similarly, when someone says that they love you, but they are clearly not loving themselves, they don't love you. Sorry. I had a partner once who was always saying, I love you, I love you, I love you. And I always said, no. You need me, you need me, you need me. And they used to get so offended. I love you. I'm like, you need me. <laughs> but fool me, I stuck around. Okay? Because I loved to be needed. So me too. I was like, I love you. In my head, I'm like, no, I like to be needed. So let's call it what it is. Most of us are in needy, possessive, attachment-based relationships. Transactional in nature. I talk about this in many of my courses, especially the one free to be. It's a relationship course. It's 50% off. I think if you're struggling in your relationship, you may want to take it. It's 50. All my courses, by the way, are 50% off. If you want to explore them right now, you can use the code SAVE50, S-A-V-E-5-0, and take a course. They will be going off sale August 15th. So go ahead and try that. So 
if you want to be in a transcendently intimate relationship with someone else, you have to understand yourself. You have to discover who you are. And I'm sorry, that takes pain, that takes solitude, that takes time, that takes being awake and aware, that takes doing the work. Okay, I started my first meditation when I was 21 years old. That is 28 years ago. 28 years. It's a, takes, it's a long time coming. This is not like easy street. So if you want to be in more and more transcendent relationships, you have to enter more and more transcendent relationships with yourself and sexually, emotionally, psychologically. It's all. You just started the course, Alija. Yeah, the free to be course is a relationship course and it is 50% off. Okay, so I write uh, in the book, A Radical Awakening, the best sex has little to do with what happens between the bed sheets and all to do what, with what happens when we are out of the bedroom. Lasting sexual connection and rhapsody emerge from a deep emotional and spiritual bond. Sexual chemistry is just one facet of the deeper intimacy each person shares with themselves. It doesn't imply sensuality and connection at all. To be sensual and connected means to see the other as a mirror, an echo of the best version of yourself where the parts of one are found in the other. The resonance between the two is so profound that the separation that exists between their forms dissolves. Everything they do then is sensual because it is deeply emanating from a sense of wholeness. So if you want transcendent intimacy, transcendent sex, you want the best blissful relationship, look no further than yourself. Are you in bliss with yourself? Are you taking care of yourself? Do you wake up every single day and go, I'm going to be psychologically connected to myself. I'm going to take care of my skin, my body, my hair, my, my muscles, my intellect, my emotion, my financial well-being, my friendships. I'm going to take care of all aspects of me. And the more I water and blossom me, then I become the tree that others come to take shade from. Powerful people, whole people, they don't go looking for anyone. They, there's nothing to find. You know, any time alone is like hallelujah. Time between relationships is not the time to go look for a relationship. It's to say hallelujah. This is, this is a time to go back to me. This is a time to regroup with me. So we don't go back. We, we don't go looking. There's nothing to find. Understand this. There is nothing to find. And then you have the potential. When you live with that abundance and that completion and that wholeness, then you have the potential to be in transcendently intimate relationships with all kinds of people and plants and dogs and children. Not just lovers, all kinds. Your community becomes resemblances and echoes of who you are and the, the wastage, the sewage in your life goes away. It's like a purification system. And if sewage shows up, you're like, oh, no problem. I need to purify more. I need to clarify more. I need to enter myself more. No worries. I'll do more work. So everything becomes a reflection of how much work you've done. How do somebody's asking, how do you teach your children? You don't teach your children anything. You figure this out on your own. Okay. If they want to learn, if they want to arrive at this at their own time, if they want to come to it because that's their calling, they will. I have no desire for my daughter to be another version of me. Well, I did a long time ago, but I dumped that fast in the gutter. When I awakened, I realized she can't be me. She has to have her own path. Maybe she'll never look at a single video. That's the way the trajectory is right now. She's like, mom, stay away from me. Don't talk to me. I don't want to hear you. Do not talk about meditation. And I had to let go of my ego wanting her to be this way because it's so amazing. But if it's not her way, it's not her way. So we don't try to convert anyone again. We put our eyes back to ourselves and focus on ourselves. So Brooke Penny is asking, is the course for individuals or couples? I want to sign up today. It's for individuals. I'm talking about individuals all the time. A couple 
is only a truly transcendent couple when the individual is in union with themselves. So all work starts with us. Okay? So I write, um, true sexual chemistry has nothing to do with how the person looks or how much money they have. Only a little. I must have been smoking something when I wrote this. Hello? True sexual chemistry has nothing to do with how the person looks? What was I smoking? Or oh, how much money they have? Okay, scratch, 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 scratch. It has a lot to do with how they look and how much money they have, okay? Tell your daughters, do not go after a loser, okay, from the street. Okay, in the book though, that's my highest self talking. <laughs> when I talk to you now, it's my lower self. And I'm like, wow, I wrote that? Okay, let's see what else I wrote in my higher self. Neither is it something we can create only by imbibing chemicals, as in smoking something like ecstasy or, you know, ayahuasca. No harm in trying, though. That's what I say. The real chemistry... Okay, here. No, I'm serious now, okay? The real... It's, it's actually true. No, really, really true. Money, I don't know. A little bit of money helps, okay? But has nothing to do with how the person looks. No, no really, guys, seriously. It really has nothing to do with how the person looks because when you're connected to someone on an emotional and mental level... They have to look like average, okay? <laughs> However, the mental and emotional connection overtakes you. You know, you've met somebody whose, whose mind was amazing, you know, haven't you? And their mind overtakes the body, almost. You know, the, the body cannot be in, sh in shambles, okay? Like cr crumbs on the floor. It has to be decent. But let me tell you, what is sexy is your emotional and mental connection. And we, we women know that, right? When we see somebody who has character, who has charisma, who has heart, who has compassion, who has a mind, that overtakes the body. Now, can I say that it's the same for men? Mm, I don't know. But for women, it's different. And we need character. We need a mind. We need consciousness. At least that's what I need. You know, I don't know. Yes, for women, a beautiful mind is so sexy, isn't it? So sexy. Put that with a good body and money, you got the whole package. Okay. Um, but no, this is true. When you're really connected, your body can, creates its own stimulants and its own psychedelics. You know, one of my boyfriends long time ago was like super good looking, like a model. So boring. So boring. So boring. Prettier than me. Who needs that? We don't need that. When we experience this kind of mental and emotional psychological connection, we touch upon our innate potential to be sexually transcendent. Deep emotional and spiritual connection is the real aphrodisiac. If you've ever felt this, let me tell you guys, it's the ultimate turn on. In an awakened state, to be intimate means to be in time, meaning right here, right now, in time, and into mate. It reflects a deep ongoing connection with the other in the present moment and in the union to the other means you're awake to the other, you're present to the other, you're attuned to the other, you're alive, you're lit up, the other lights you up. That is true into me see. The very word intimacy can be broken into into me see where the me is the part of ourselves we see reflected through the mirror of the relationship. When we are truly engaging in an intimate relationship, the act of sex is not a verb. It is not an action we take that begins and ends with a goal, but it is who we are. We are sex. We don't have sex. We are sex. How about that? Through our touch during the day, our dialogue, our shared memories and our spontaneous laughter, it's how we experience the other. So, Again, this cannot occur if you are not truly intimate with yourself. If you're conscious, if you're limited, if you're inhibited, if you're critical, if you don't love yourself, you are not going to find this with anyone else because you are in relationship with your own ego. You want to be seen in a particular way. Because you want to be seen in a particular way, you cannot see yourself or the other. It is only when you drop the ego within yourself and truly see your own essence 
that you can begin to see your children's essence, your partner's essence, your friend's essence, right? You have to get out of relationship with your ego. Most of us are in relationship with our own ego. How am I being perceived? How am I being loved? How am I being liked? That is not intimacy. That is ego -missy, right? You are an egomaniac in relationship with your ego and you think you're in relationship with your child and you're not. You're constantly coming up your own relationship with your ego. So if you want intimacy, get this book <laughs> and understand that you can only find it in life, in lovers, in nature, when you walk in your own self. You walk truly in your own skin, truly grateful to be you, to be your, your authentic self, truly abundant as you are. I'll see you for the next book club when I see you. Only nine more left, something like that. Bye, guys.